Hello again, everybody. Steve Politi from the Star Ledger, joined, of course, by Tom Lucci, our esteemed Rutgers beat writer. We're here to preview Rutgers versus North Carolina Thursday night game, ESPN. Tom, you have you have something here. Well, I'm, I'm a little curious. I figured about. I would. Uh, you know those those friendly wagers that the governors make states yeah. when when their schools yeah. plays. You're an esteemed North Carolina graduate. I'm a graduate of Rutgers. I, I figured we'd put uh, make a friendly wager on the game. This is just a sampling of the beefsteaks from my garden. Okay. So I'll put up some beefsteaks, tomatoes to whatever, what is the product of North Carolina? Besides like some, basketball. Some, some, would you like some barbecue? I can get you barbecue some would North sound Carolina good. barbecue. That'd be good. The problem with this is I don't think North Carolina's going to win the game, and then I have to go get the barbecue from North Carolina, which could be a long trip just to satisfy a bet for you. Well, but you can go down there during basketball season okay. because that's the only season that matters in North that's Carolina, true. right? That's right. Apple yeah, Hill. Very good point. So uh, I just think in the interest, you, you have to be oh, loyal to your alma mater. That's fair. It's okay? a wager. I will okay. bet a nice barbecue sandwich against you. And this is just a small sampling. To me. Well, I get more than sample. this? You get more than this. Well, now I've got a reason to watch the game it's good to hear all right well let's talk some football what do you I mean this is obviously a pivotal game now for for Rutgers after losing to Fresno State in the opener uh, I think in a lot of ways the season kind of hinges on what happens here on Thursday do you agree I, I, I agree I think this is the entire season uh, you know you can't publicly get the kids the players or the coaches to admit it's a must-win game if you look at the way the schedule breaks down it's a must-win game uh, if Rutgers happens to start off 0-2 here for the first time since 2002 the best they could be in the non-conference would be 3-2. and two. When you look at their Big East schedule with all the road games, you start at West Virginia, you, you go at Cincinnati, you're home Connecticut, go at Pittsburgh, you still have to go at South Florida. I'm looking at 3-4 and four might be the best in the league if they start off 0-2 here. That puts you at 6-6. Six and six. That puts you on the borderline for a bowl. Louisville did not go to a bowl game at 6-6 six and six last year. Rutgers might be able to at 6-6 six and six last year, but again, you're, you're leaving your fate up to somebody else. So that's why this game becomes so, so important. In the overall scheme of things, in terms of the one one loss record, right. although you're discounting, I mean, the Big East, they could win some of those Big East road games. Let's be honest, looking at looking at the league right now, there is no dominant team in this well, league. If, if Steve, Connecticut, they, they've Tampa. never they've never won at West Virginia. It's, it's the true. last time they went down to Cincinnati, they got they got beat pretty good in their nine and zero season. They still have to go to South Florida, which is the highest ranked team in the league. That's three tough road games right there. I'm not saying they can't win at Pitt or any of those games. And then the home game in October is with the co-champs from last year, Connecticut. So That's a game they have to win. It's not an easy Big East schedule the way it breaks down. I think the, the more important thing is that they have to show that they can play better than they did against Fresno State, especially, especially offensively. I'm still scratching no my head at how a team with, with this talent, with this level, with, with the receivers they have, with a, with a fifth-year senior quarterback can only score seven points in the way they did. I, I, mean, I don't think we're going to see it again. I, I mean, I, I'd be surprised. If we do see it again, I think then some uh, drastic changes need to be made. But I think we may see a little bit more. He has to get Mason Robinson on track. I think we have to see a little bit more of Jordan Brooks. And I'm not sure that the Cordell Young getting the ball 26 times in his first start off the knee surgery was uh, the wisest choice. But he was the most effective back, so I understand it. Uh, and, and they need to, to figure out a way to, to spread the wealth in the receiver. If, if, if teams are going to double Kenny Brett, they have to throw more to the tight end. They have to throw more to the backs coming out of the backfield. They have to throw more to Dennis Campbell. They have to throw more to Ty. You know, they have to spread the wealth, which they weren't able to do very well against Fresno State. Why wouldn't they open this thing up? Why wouldn't they become a pass-first team when, you, when you've got the receivers? And is it the situation with the blocking? Is it Shiano's philosophy? I mean, I was surprised well, they, they ran the ball into the line as many times as they did against Fresno State. And I wonder why they wouldn't, you know, put the focus on Kenny Britt, put, put it on the passing offense. Well, what happened is the very first play, Mike Teal got hit. He got pressured. He got hurried. He got hit. And Mike has, has admitted, he admitted during practice this week, that he, let, he felt he left 21 points on the table. And a lot of that was because he was pressured. Mike Teal is not used to being pressured. I mean, Rutgers has been one or two in the country in fewest sacks allowed in the past two years. Now, all of a sudden, with a young line, Teal's getting more pressure than ever. Now, does that mean shortening up the routes, making them more timing routes, patterns, you know, quicker, quicker drops, quicker steps, quicker throws? Yes. Uh, that may be an adjustment in the passing game that has to be made. Want to pick a score? I think Rutgers is going to win... Uh, 23-17, and I, I, let's just touch on two quick subplots. The 9-11, first of all. That's very true. You know, you know that's, that's a significant day, and the fact that Rutgers is on a Thursday night. They've had some great history on Thursday nights. Two, th two years ago, mm -hmm. Louisville, they beat on a Thursday night, number three last year, South Florida. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that we will see, um, you know, one of the most uh, beloved and admired sideline reporters in probably in the entire country is going to be at the game. And... Uh, I know you're looking forward to that. Is that, is that Aaron, Aaron Andrews going to be at the game? No, Anthony Fusilli. Anthony does, Fusilli. Yeah, he does MSG, <laughs> you know. So um, he'll be one of the guys. Right. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing food at the game. I'm going to pick 41-17 uh, Rutgers victory. Convincing victory means I have to get you some barbecue. Barbecue. And you'll, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I've got a, good, got a good place for you. And that's all we got time for this week. Thanks for watching. Steve Politi, Tom Lucci, as always. Enjoy the game.